Hello and welcome. Welcome back if you're new. Um, this is the Vegan Remix and I make vegan baked or cooked goods. So we're going to get into that. Today I'm going to tell you, I'll give you two ideas on what to make a, a vegan or your valentine on Valentine's Day. So I don't usually celebrate Valentine's Day myself, but I understand it's a big tradition and it's nice to show the person you love affection and shower them in things and do all these nice things for them. However, I feel it should be done throughout the year, not just one day. And I think it's a bit of a marketing ploy by companies and other things to just boost sales. So I'm a little bit uh, about it, but I'd love to give you some ideas of things you can do, not only on Valentine's Day, but throughout the year for the person you love. Um, my love language is food. So I love to show my love by cooking for other people and it's, uh, I love it when other people cook for me. So the, I'm going to be ta talking about recipes or food that you can make for people as opposed to a physical gift that you can buy. The best part about these recipes, they don't even have to be vegan. They, you can ad adapt them or buy ingredients that aren't vegan and just make them anyway. I'm going to be making these little pastry roses and we're going to be making churros. Hopefully heart shaped, but we'll see how they turn out because I've never made them in a shape other than a star before. So, okay, so I'm going to be starting with the roses. For this, you can use store-bought or made pastry. I made some earlier. You just need a flaky pastry for this. Then you're going to take one to two apples and cut them into very thin slices. Once you have all your apples cut, put them in a bowl with about two tablespoons of water and two tablespoons of lemon, or two teaspoons of lemon juice. Then microwave for two minutes, checking it one minute. You need them to be soft. Now for the pastry, you can either buy or make this. I made this a couple of days ago and it's really in need of being used. I'll link the recipe I have used down below for anybody interested but it just needs to be a flaky pastry. Now you're gonna to wanna to roll it out into pieces that are about half a centimeter thick. Once happy with the thickness, cut it into strips. You want them to be big enough so that when you fold it over, the, it covers about half of the apple. Don't forget to preheat your oven. 180 degrees Celsius bake. You're also going to need about a tablespoon of jam and heat it up in the microwave. Your choice what kind of jam. I'm using homemade raspberry. When your apples are done, they should be nice, soft and malleable so they're not going to snap when we roll them up. Um, mine only took about a minute and a half. Be careful, the bowl will get hot. I'm going to be using these silicone cupcake trays, but if you have something shallower, that's better. I'm just greasing them a little bit. Once your jam is warm, be extremely careful because sugar gets insanely hot. And using a pastry brush or the back of a spoon, just add a little bit to each strip. Now you take your apples and line them up, making sure that you can see the apple from the top of the pastry. I may have cut my apples a little small, so the thickness of your pastry will depend on your apples. When you lay the apples down, make sure they overlap, they create like a little chain. Then fold up. <laughs> fold up and roll. And you have an uncooked apple rose, which you're going to place in your pre-greased tin and then bake. And you're just going to do that for however much pastry you have or how many you want. Once your oven is preheated, chuck them in. A few moments later. This here is how the roses turned out like this. They look really good, right? We're going to come back and try them when they cool down a little bit. Alright, for the churros, you're going to want to um, heat up some 
oil, which I have in this back pot here, and you can probably hear it. In here, I have a cup of water, which I'm going to bring to a boil with two tablespoons of oil, half a teaspoon of salt, and two and a half tablespoons of sugar. Once boiling, remove from the heat and add a cup of flour. Mix till you get a dough. It'll be nice, thick, and look a little something like this. You're then going to line a baking sheet like this one and attempt to pipe hearts, or if you're going to pipe just straight shapes, you're not interested in the hearts, pipe it straight into the oil. To pipe this, I'm going to attempt to use a cookie press. A piping bag will work well as well, however my piping bags are too small. I also think that this nozzle is going to be a little bit small, but we'll see how it works. And for the moment of truth, I mean, kind of. Mine's very malleable and very firm, so I guess I can just kind of make a snake and then shape it, but we'll see. When you start frying, make sure you have a little bowl with some paper towels or grease catching stuff to the side and ready, and make sure you have your cinnamon powder concoction ready. Um, it's literally just sugar and cinnamon. I will put the recipe down in the description below. I've got a pre-made one already ready from last time I made churros, but I will definitely link it for you. Or we'll pop it up on the screen so you can see the ratio. In order to fry it, you should just be able to pick it up and place it in the oil. And just coat it. My recipe is, yours probably won't look quite so white if you use granulated sugar. This is done using icing sugar. But then, that is one of your churros done. And you just coat each of them. And then, if you want to, you make a chocolate sauce. I'm not going to make one today, but I will link a really good recipe down below for you. Alright, now we have the final product. So, we've got the rose, apple rose. Um, so I knew from the beginning my pastry wasn't the best. It's a little bit, it was a little bit on the wet side, which means it just, it is cooked, just not as nice as I would like it to be. Would be better with a bought pastry. Nonetheless, we're going to try it. So I'm going to go from the top. Okay, the flavours, the apple and the jam, really good. However, I probably should have gone a tiny bit thinner with my pastry. There is a lot in there, probably why it didn't cook all the way through as well. Um, but, store-bought pastry or a better pastry recipe. I know what I did wrong with mine, but... And these, what a cute, like, gift. Or, you can have it set up for dinner afterwards, like, oh. And the best part about it, it's, like, crunchy and flaky and sweet apple and then we have the churros now I had more luck actually rolling these so taking a little bit of dough rolling it out like a snake and then pushing the top and bottoms together but the more important part how do they taste bloody good um As for the inside, it's kind of like a doughy kind of texture. I like them this way though, and it's nice and sweet. If you want to use powdered sugar like I did, it's great. I highly recommend it. Slightly sweeter, but it sticks to your fingers. <laughs> Again, a very sweet treat that you can have as dessert with your partner for a romantic dinner. Or you can just make any time, and they don't have to be hot, so you can make this as a normal churro recipe. Even better, dip them in chocolate, and you could have churros and strawberries. But that is all I have for you today. I hope these ideas have been helpful. Just 
Because I know not everybody likes receiving gifts. I prefer for somebody to cook to me or do actions or bits and pieces like this or best of all, make food. So, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Peace out. Please remember to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon if you've enjoyed my content. And happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Four